Hernandez was killed in that wreck. Local Ted's Ian Margol is live at the Coast Guard station where a press conference is expected any moment now. Ian. Yeah, Nikki Todd, again, tragic news uh, coming from this. We can confirm Jose Fernandez, the pitcher for the Marlins, was killed. He was one of three people killed during this boating accident overnight. Let's go ahead and take a look at some video we just sent over. Moments ago, we saw the bodies of these three people being moved over into the medical examiner's uh, van over here. Again, we can confirm three people were killed in this boating accident. And if we go ahead and take a look at this video we shot at the scene, you can see the boat completely overturned on the jetty over at South Point Park Pier, just off of South Beach there. About an hour ago, when we were there, crews had begun to restart their search. They got word there may be a fourth person that was on this boat. Uh, fire crews, City of Miami fire crews were getting a second boat to use sonar. Back out live now. We are here at the Coast Guard station on Miami Beach. We are waiting a press conference that is expected to start at 1030. Again, we can confirm that Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez was one of three people that was killed on a boating accident last night. The Marlins have canceled their game against the Braves that was scheduled for later today. Tragic news this morning, uh, Todd and Nikki. Again, uh, our thoughts, of course, with his family and his friends at this time. No doubt. Ian, the personal tragedy, quite great. And of course, yeah. uh, the repercussions that this is going to have throughout the sports world yeah. as well. And throughout this community. And, and um, of course, it's a developing story. And as we can see, those sad images of the bodies being brought to land. We're going to take a break. Uh, we have two crews working this story, and we will be right back. Local 10 News starts right now. We start with breaking news. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez among three people killed overnight in a boat crash. That's right. We, are, we have crews at the Coast Guard station as well as uh, Will Manso's in contact with the Marlins. We, of course, will have continuing team coverage on this all morning long and get that press conference as it appears live. On also, the, the Marlins game has been canceled against the Braves right, today. The Marlins announced that. But we want to get right over to Jennifer Correa with a quick look at the weather forecast, find out what the rest of the Sunday is going to be like, and then continue our breaking news coverage. Jennifer. Uh, I'm going to start off with the radar because yes, we're seeing some thunderstorms getting a little close to the coast. Now notice this line of thunderstorms breaking apart as it got closer to Biscayne Bay. That's still that's a good sign, but it's still very cloudy out there. Lots of lightning strikes are pushing into the upper keys. And speaking of the keys, the middle keys right now, Marathon all the way up to Long Key, really seeing the rain falling at the moment. There are these showers as well that are tracking towards the west. Uh, they could dissipate, but keep in mind for Broward County, if you're planning to head out to the beach, it's probably not going to be so nice in the next few minutes because even if they dissipate, a lot of leftover clouds will be pushing on shore. Now, as we continue on through the afternoon, I had mentioned how we could have a shower too anytime, and that's going to be the pattern not only for the rest of our Sunday, but for this upcoming week. There's a lot of energy going on in our atmosphere, plus with an approaching cold front this upcoming week, that's only going to enhance the moisture and the instability as well. Highs will get into those lower 90s. I'm going to talk about the tropics because we're still watching uh, several areas out there. Now, there is uh, Carl and Lisa. Not a concern anymore because the good news is both systems eventually are going to fizzle out, but also Carl especially is racing towards the northern Atlantic over the open waters, which you know what? It's gonna, it's a very good sign that Bermuda didn't have such a long and prolonged impact uh, with that system. Possibly still some large swells out there. Now there is this one area that's important because it's going to be headed towards the Caribbean in the next few days. And so in the next five days, this tropical wave has 80% chance for formation. We still have a lot of time to track it, but it's definitely going to be concerning once it gets into the very warm waters of the Caribbean Sea, because once it does that, it does have a greater potential for becoming into a tropical system possibly even a hurricane, but we're talking about the end of the week into the weekend and the following week. So we have a lot of time, 10 days, 10 to 14 days out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we've had already 12 named storms. So we had Alex. If you can remember, Alex was in the beginning of the year, but the last named storm we just had was Lisa. So the next one will be Matthew. If that tropical wave develops, making it the 13th named storm, we'll keep you posted. We'll be back after the break.
A big breaking news story to update you on now. There are reports now, well, we've confirmed that Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez was among the three people killed in a boat crash uh, off of Miami Beach overnight. Now, Will Manso um, calling in that information to us shortly. Will joins us once again on the phone. Will, good morning again. Nikki Todd, I wish it was a better morning and certainly better news to report on what should be a great day with the Marlins playing Dolphins home opener. But as you know, and as you've been reporting, we have confirmed, and it has been confirmed by the Miami Marlins, that Jose Fernandez has died at the age of 24 in a tragic boating accident this morning. The boating accident, which you and other local stations have been reporting, happened overnight. Uh, did include Jose. The Marlins released a statement within the last 45 minutes, and that statement read, the Miami Marlins organization is devastated by the tragic loss of Jose Fernandez. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this very difficult time. Today's game against the Atlanta Braves has been canceled. And the real difficult part of this is to take in, guys, as we talk about Jose Fernandez, is the ironic twist of everything that's happened to put this in motion. Jose Fernandez was scheduled to pitch today for the Miami Marlins. Adam Conley, another young pitcher for them, was coming off the disabled list, and the Marlins decided to get Conley some work to push Jose's start to Monday, tomorrow, to pitch in it. We appear to have lost Will yeah. Manso on you know. uh, his phone connection. We'll yeah, we're showing some video, file video of Hernandez. Hernandez, I, I was at Marlins Park Tuesday night. He had an amazing game. Um, and uh, we have more information coming in. Reporter Ian Margol is live at the Coast Guard station. Ian? Yeah, Nikki Todd, again, this tragic news, Jose Fernandez, the pitcher for the Marlins, dead after this boating accident overnight. We are here at the Coast Guard Station on Miami Beach. Let's take a look at some video we sent in just a few minutes ago. Moments ago, Jose's body and the body of two other men who were on, excuse me, two other people who were on this boat were brought to the medical examiner's uh, van here. And if you go to take a look at this video from the scene, you can see this white boat completely flipped over on the jetties over uh, in this area. And again, this is just some tragic news. We do know that Miami-Dade Fire Rescue were the ones that recovered these three bodies. Uh, they were searching at, at a point about an hour ago for a fourth body, but we can now confirm there is only three people that they were uh, that were on this boat at this point. We are waiting at about 10.30. We're supposed to hear from officials here to get some more information about this. But what we can confirm once again Jose Fernandez, the pitcher for the Marlins, deceased from this boating accident overnight. Tragic news. He was scheduled to start, as Will was trying to say. He was scheduled to start today. He was switched over to starting on Monday. Marlins have released a statement that he is that they have canceled the game against the Braves. And this is just tragic news, guys. Back out live now. We're waiting for some more information. Of course, we're going to bring you the very latest. But our, our thoughts right now with his family and his friends as we wait for some more information to bring you guys. All right. All right, Ian Margo, thank you at uh, Coast Guard Station, Miami Beach. The Marlins did release that statement. It reads as this. The Miami Marlins organization is devastated by the tragic loss of Jose Fernandez. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this very difficult time. Today's game against the Atlanta Braves has been canceled. Our team coverage will continue in just a moment. Uh, Local 10 News will be right back. We continue to follow breaking news. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez dead in a boating accident overnight just off Miami Beach. He, uh, we have confirmed this with the Marlins organization. Executive sports producer David Lang is in our video report with more coverage. Good morning, David. This is beyond shocking for the sports world, for South Florida, to wake up on a Sunday morning and find out that truly a sports icon of, 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 of South Florida died in a way like this. Such a young, dynamic, talented, fiery, you see him here all fired up. This is just devastating, devastating news beyond, beyond the sports world. You have a young man who came here from Cuba, who became an American citizen, who represents so much of the American dream and America's pastime and has been the Marlins for Major League Baseball, for sports, for kids. This is just crushing, crushing, crushing news that, I mean, when I woke up this morning, I, I, I'm still in shock. I, I can't believe it. 
what Jose means to, to Marlins fans, to baseball fans, to South Florida is beyond words. And this was a guy who's so young and so talented and has such a bright future ahead of him. And like that, uh, just overnight, killed in an instant. I, I, I really don't have the words to put into perspective his potential, what he meant. I mean, you think about baseball and you think about, you know, baseball players who were killed before their time. I mean, you're talking like Roberto Clemente. You're talking, I, I mean, it's a very short list to have a young athlete. I, I want to say in his prime, I don't even know if he'd reached his prime yet. This is a young man who already bounced back from Tommy John surgery. And this year the Marlins had him on an innings limit. And Jose has been such a spectacle, so truly great. To, to watch and uh, Will Manso, our sports director is on the phone and Will, you know this, you've covered Jose, you've covered a lot of athletes and you and I were texting this morning and, and I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Well, David, it's, uh, you know, we have the word tragedy is a word we've used throughout the morning and I think earlier we were trying to talk with uh, Nikki and Todd, unfortunately we got cut off, but the, the point of the way tragedy happens is the unexpected nature of something like this. You can never even think, imagine that this would happen. So as we update people that are that are watching now and tuning in and maybe in disbelief and don't want to believe the news, the models have confirmed that Jose Fernandez was killed in a boating accident overnight. That has been confirmed by the team. There are news conferences coming up with the Coast Guard and eventually the Miami Marlins as well. I was just texting with David Sampson, Marlins team president, who said at this point he's just too much in shock to speak over the phone, but that he will speak later to the media uh, when the Coast Guard makes a statement and the team makes a statement to discuss what has happened. And to put it in perspective, you're talking about a 24-year-old, one of the most dynamic personalities you can ever cover and meet. His story of coming to the United States, I think anyone who's familiar with Jose Fernandez and Miami Marlins understands the way to get here. The numerous trips that he tried to leave the island of Cuba and was intercepted and sent back and then jailed as a teenager when he was caught and then taking that chance once again and finally making it to the United States, following his dream, playing high school ball in Tampa, being a high draft pick by a team in Miami, so close to his native Cuba, and then becoming a superstar for the Miami Marlins, two-time All-Star, 2013 National League Rookie of the Year, and one of the more vibrant personalities in the game of baseball. I mean, the Marlins, when he pitches, they call it Jose Day. And this is what I was trying to explain earlier to uh, Nicky and Todd before we got cut off, is the unexpected nature of a tragedy and how you – the puzzle pieces that come together to make something terrible like this happen. Jose Fernandez was scheduled to pitch two days for the Miami Marlins. Yeah. They had actually pushed that Marlins. back yesterday. Adam because, Conley, yeah. Another young pitcher was moved to pitch today because he had been on the disabled list. So Jose's start was then moved to Monday, which means Jose was scheduled to pitch tomorrow. If Jose Fernandez is pitching today, he's likely not on the boat overnight fishing with his good friends as he often did. He's an avid fisherman, avid boater. He's likely not out, and this tragedy doesn't happen. Again, we're just connecting the dots here on what leads to a tragedy. There is no explanation. There's no way to explain it, describe it, other than the fact that Jose Fernandez is a young life, a vibrant personality. Forget the fact that he's a wonderful, amazing, talented baseball player, but he's a friend. I mentioned this earlier to, to Nicky and Todd again when the initial report came out and, and the Marlins confirmed. Jose recently announcing that his girlfriend is pregnant with their first child. So you piece this together, and there's just no words that can describe. There's no comparison. David had mentioned earlier about loss of athletes. There have been a number of NBA players or college players that have died uh, tragically, whatever reason it may be, for heart conditions, for things like this. But in an like this, I think back to Thurman Munson, that great Yankees catcher who died in the late 70s in a plane crash. David mentioned Roberto Clemente, who was the tail end of his career but was still an iconic figure and such a popular popular baseball player. Uh, you get into that realm when you talk about the loss of Jose. This is not just a local story that impacts the South Florida community. This is a story that impacts the sports world, one of the most vibrant personalities and talented players in all sports that at the age of 24. Well, when you covered him, and, and just, you know, you've covered so many athletes throughout your time. You know, you've, ha you've covered so many personalities. But you and I always talk about one of the words that Jose Fernandez always used when he spoke was he would say the word lucky. Whether they won, they lost, he would say lucky. There was such a sense of appreciation for being here in the United States, being here in the major leagues, and having the opportunity 
to be here and li he lived the American dream. We covered, you know, his mother in the stands, his abuela in the stands. Just kind of frame what it meant to sort of have well, the perfect star for South Florida. If, if, if you had to build a young star that could be the perfect icon of South Florida, Jose would be the guy you would have built. And you know, the tragedy of it too, David, is that he, you said in the American dream, he is the true definition of the American dream. And I mentioned earlier the, the, the ill-fated trips to not make it here, to get sent back, to be in jail in Cuba as a teenager, as a 12, 13-year-old, to have to deal with that and have to continue to attempt to follow you to make it here. I remember the day that Jose was made an American citizen, and we were all there, our crews were there, you know, all the local stations. Jose did not stop smiling for the entire hour he was there. And when he put up his hand and he pledged to this nation and he had that flag, it wasn't a gimmick, it wasn't a game, it wasn't a, uh, let me do this for the cameras. It was sheer joy from a young man who had always dreamed of coming to this country fulfilling his dreams. And he did. No matter the tragedy that's happened now that Jose's life has been cut short, he followed his dream. He got to the major leagues and became a superstar. Just the sadness of his all is that he then now at 24 with so much ahead of him with a family. You mentioned his mom, his abuela. I mentioned earlier that his girlfriend is pregnant with their first child. There's no way to stack up how tragic this is when you put together the pieces of Jose Fernandez's amazing life. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and it'll be said by many again. I don't think you could write a Hollywood script no. that would include all the twists and turns that made it for Jose to get to this point. And, just and to, for this script to end with this tragedy is just something that's just hard to comprehend right now. And Will, just, just the fit. I mean, something I always think about and, and we've discussed with Jose is just the fit of him and the Marlins organization. You know, throughout the years, whatever ups and downs the Marlins organization has had, you know, this was the young star that they could grab onto. I mean, he still had two years under his contract with the Marlins. This was someone who the, who the fans really embraced. We mentioned that he's not just a player. He was a hashtag. Every single time the guy pitched was a Jose day. It was an event. You would plan, do I want to go to the ballpark today? Well, Jose's pitching. I mean, how does an organization, uh, forget move on, just even fathom that something like well, this could happen to such a dynamic, talented player. They don't, and, and I mentioned David Sampson, who said he's just not ready to comment now, and the Marlins will speak later. Right now, this is all going, you know, we're sitting here having this discussion, and I think as fans are and people that are watching are, thinking of little things going through your mind, think of what the Marlins are going through their mind. You know, David Sampson, I've had numerous conversations in the past about Jose, and he's often asked, and the Marlins are often asked about whether he's going to resign. His agent, Scott Boris, has talked about a $300 million contract for Jose. There was always the thought that Jose would end up somewhere else. But in the Marlins' minds, they always said, we're going to do everything in our power to keep him for the many reasons you just mentioned. Jose's not just a great baseball player. He's that dynamic personality who really, in many ways, solidifies what South Florida is about, the strong community that, that, to come here and follow the American dream, not just the Cuban-American community, any community, anybody that comes to South Florida with a dream from whatever country it may be. Jose represented that. And the Marlins understood that. They understood the impact culturally that he had. But it also helped the fact that Jose was such a personality. It's one thing if he didn't smile or have fun as he played the game. Jose was always smiling. He was yep. playing against opponents and finger-pointing and laughing. And guys would yep. hit home runs off of him and he'd give them credit and point at him. It's such a rarity in a game of baseball that it's such a old man's game in many ways that Jose yes. was young, vibrant personality. They always so, talk about, well, those unwritten rules of baseball. It's hard to describe what they must be going through right now. You know, they always talk about those unwritten rules of baseball, and you have kind of old-school players like a Brian McCann who gets angry if a guy flips his bat or if a guy stares down a batter when he strikes him out or if he gives an extra fist pump. But Jose was all about that. I mean, the absolute joy that he played with Every single time he took the mound, just, I don't know, other than Dontrell Willis in, in the, you know, 10 plus years of covering the Marlins, other than the D train and the event when Dontrell would come out, I've never seen, I don't know if I've seen another major league pitcher with that sort of, you know, joie de vivre, that sort of enthusiasm for every single time he took the mound. Yeah, and that's, you know, the funny thing about Jose is there are many in the game that were, felt he was a little too brash and, and, and it rubbed them the wrong way, and usually that was the opposing player because he was the one beating you. But Jose's thing wasn't a gimmick. And I think over time, others around the game, you mentioned Brian McCann and other people who have complained about Jose's style and attitude, 
started realizing that this isn't a gimmick. This is Jose 24-7, vibrant, loving life, joking, practical jokes, laughing. This is what he was about. And, and when you give, when you put it in the, the, of what he's been through, when you really look at what he's been through, how can he not be excited? A guy that could have easily, as a teenager, died at sea or died in the jail or left in Cuba and never followed his dream, got it. How could he not live his life every day with that kind of love and passion? And it's what attracted fans to him, attracted the organization, and attracted a real following and respect from other major leaguers. Not every player is going to be like Jose like that, but they also don't have the backstory of why Jose is the way he is and the way he was. You know, the, Will, the, the Dan Lebatard told a story about uh, Jose when he first came to this country. He was at an airport and he was in a bathroom and, and they had one of those automatic, the water runs under your hands. And Jose mm -hmm. looked like confused. He didn't know what it was. I mean, just, there, you know, there was such a new experience coming to the United States at such a young age with so much promise and so much talent and just sort of some of the cultural differences and this guy handled everything with so much aplomb and with so much, you know, passion and so much fun mm -hmm. that even if, you know, there were, there were barriers to him getting adjusted to the game here, he never, ever let it show. No, and I'll give you a perfect example of Jose's personality and how it wasn't a gimmick and it was truly him. And, and it's a story you remember as well. And I think anybody who's a fan of Jose remembers. Jose was asked to throw the ceremonial first puck at a Panthers game last Oh, yeah. And he threw out the puck, and he, first of all, he had never been to a hockey game before, because obviously in Cuba, it's not something they don't follow hockey. It's not something, you know, me being Cuban, having Cuban parents, they know nothing about hockey. You know, my parents know nothing. Jose was the same way, coming to this country, learning about hockey, had no idea what he was getting himself into. He dropped that puck, and he sat down to watch that game. And Jose's energy and the way he was screaming and just going crazy in that Panthers yep. uniform, that wasn't a gimmick. That was just a big kid. That was a young man who had never seen a hockey game before, who thought, my God, what have I missed? I never saw this in Cuba. I've come to this country, and look at this, how much fun this is. Screaming and cheering, and he, all the way to the end, well, I remember the Panthers at the end had a great comeback, and they won, and Jose was going crazy, and it was sheer passion and energy, and that's Jose in a nutshell, and anything he did. And you see where he got it from. His mom and his abuela, they go to all the games he pitches. And he points at them when he gets a big strikeout. And you see them jumping up and down. It's never old hat to them. It's never like, oh, look, my, my son, my grandson was in yeah. a major league deal. It's always this passion knowing that this wasn't a given. This may not have happened. And every moment we live is a dream. And I, and I know it's been said and needs to be said again. At a time like this, you mentioned what the Marlins are going through. I can only imagine what his mother and abuela oh. are going through. Mom and his abuela who are there by his side all day. That is their life. And our condolences go out to them because... It's not even imaginable what is going through their mind now. The loss of Jose, the loss of a child, the loss of a grandson. Oh. It's just, there's no way to put it other than just the massive tragedy that all of South Florida is feeling. The uh, whole the community. They're going to wait till after the Coast Guard News Conference, which if I'm not mistaken, let's get, it's gotten moved during our conversation. The Coast Guard News Conference is scheduled for 1030. The Marlins then at the ballpark will have some sort of news conference as well where they'll speak. Uh, well, David Sampson and, and the Marlins organization will get their take on this. And just again, devastating nature of this news. I mean, it's it's just something you talk you talk about his family and you talk about sort of just just the devastating loss. I, I just I can't even imagine, Will, what that experience must have been like in the Marlins offices for Jeffrey Loria, for David Sampson, who, they, I feel like the Marlins organization, and, and tell me what you think about this, they looked at Jose as sort of their crowning achievement. This was a guy they found. This was a guy who represents what they want to represent as an organization. He did not have quite yet a long-term deal. He still had two years, but you had to think that him and Giancarlo Stanton were going to be exactly who the Marlins built their entire franchise around. And now you got the you got the All-Star game coming to Miami next year. Jose was the centerpiece of the Marlins. Not just, I mean, from every perspective, from an emotional perspective, like you said, an emotional leader, from a talent perspective, already been through Tommy John surgery, still through 98, 99, all kinds of control, would strike out multiple batters on multiple occasions. I mean, this is as good a young prospect. And it's crazy to think, 24 young, he was a prospect. He hadn't even begun to touch the level of talent that mm -hmm. he had. And he was already a two-time All-Star. I mean, it's just, well, it's so, I, 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 I want someone to wake me up from this. I mean, that, that's, well, just as someone who loves point, baseball. 
to your point, two things from it. Number one is this year Jose set the franchise record already. He said it earlier. I said about a month ago for most strikeouts in the season. So he was having that type of dominant season. He set a single-season franchise record four strikeouts this year in his big comeback full season. Like you said, the Marlins would try to keep his innings at a limit. He still had a spectacular year. But I think to your point, too, about the organization, you know, what it means from baseball, yes, it hurts. I mean, look, uh, Jose Fernandez is the centerpiece of this franchise. But the Miami Marlins organization will go on from a baseball perspective. From the emotional, personal perspective, this is where it gets difficult. Jose was the heart and soul of the franchise. And for all that has been said of Jeffrey Luria in the past and, and all the stuff and all the things that have been talked about Luria, the one thing you can say for sure with Luria is that he loved Jose Fernandez. He was the man who drove, financed, set up, found a way to get yes. Jose Abuela, to get here to the country, to get here, to get the ball again, surprising Jose where Jose was just shocked when he saw his grandmother there. Do you remember how much that meant to him, Will? That's a great... By Jeff organizations don't do that for just anyone. But you have so many players within an organization, so many people within your franchise, you can't just do that for everyone. Jeff that... Loria did that for Jose Fernandez, and that tells you how important Jose was as a person. Not as a baseball player, but as a person for him to have done that for Jose. For people just waking up right now who are just turning on their TV... Marlins ace Jose Fernandez was killed overnight in a boat crash. I'm David Lang, executive sports producer. We have Will Manso, our sports director, on the phone. And we're just reflecting a little bit about what this young man meant to the Marlins, to Major League Baseball, to South Florida, to the Cuban-American community. This is an unbelievably shocking tragedy. Will, you mentioned that moment where Loria surprised Jose with his abuela. And I think that, you know, one of the things about sports is sometimes you need a character, a personality, who transcends just the games, just the outs, just the strikeouts, who, who can sort of, people can connect to. And I think in this community, a young man who comes to Cuba and lives his dream and loves his mom and abuela, it's just, that is the, that is the South Florida story. That is the American story. And Jose yeah. lived it, and Jose lived it in a beautiful way. And I think despite this tragedy, when people remember Jose, when people frame him in the context of Major League history, I mean, he's going to be one of the great could have been or what would have been. You figure he's, he had another 10, 15 years left. This, this guy is off to a Hall of Fame start to his career. Yeah, and, and the what, if, what could have been and what might have been will certainly be a part of the story because Jose had the potential, and he was on track. To be a Hall of Fame type player, because at 24, and given that he was the 2013 rookie of the year, he was a two-time All-Star, set the single franchise record for strikeout, single season record for strikeouts in the season this year, really on the upswing, on top of the personality stuff we talked about. Just from a baseball perspective, I've had this discussion with many people, and you know, to me, the best two pitchers in baseball are Clayton Kershaw and Jose Fernandez, and that's quite amazing company when you're talking about Kershaw, who is, you know, to most the best pitcher in baseball. But I think if you ask any executive, who do you start a team with? I can guarantee you that as a pitcher, the ones who don't say Kershaw are saying Jose Fernandez. And that tells you the impact, again, at 24 years old, he had as a baseball player. We talked about the impact he has as a human being. And to recap, as David just mentioned, for those just tuning in, Jose Fernandez, Marlon Zays, involved in a tragic voting accident that happened this morning, taking the lives of three. Jose, one of those, dead at the age of 24. Uh, every time we say it, it seems like it's unreal, not true. I know the Marlins feel that way. Texted shortly a little while ago with David Sampson, Marlins president, who said he just couldn't come on to speak because he just wasn't ready. There's just too much stuff going on right now through his head and the mind of the organization. But the Marlins will, after a Coast Guard news conference, hold their own news conference to discuss this tragedy. And I can imagine all that can be discussed is just shock, shock and disbelief that that phone call would come in that Jose lost his life. And the, the, the thing we mentioned earlier, the terrible twist to this is that Jose was scheduled to pitch today for the Marlins. Today was supposed to be Jose Day up until about two days ago. Uh, the Marlins switched his start because they wanted to make sure to get a start for Adam Conley, their young lefty who was coming off the disabled list. Jose's start was pushed to tomorrow. And the reason I point this out is not to say, oh, well, look, this happened, this happened, it led to this, but it goes to show the terrible little circumstances, things that happen during these tragedies that you don't foresee. If Jose is pitching today, he's likely not out last night with his friends on the boat. But to put it clearly, though, Jose was an avid fisherman. He loved fishing. He loved boating. If you look at his Instagram, there are many pictures of him with friends out on the boat, out at 
Well, we'll Will Mansell, sports, sports director for us, and, and David Lang, sports producer. Uh, we want to just weigh in here, Will, with the statement, that yeah. official statement from the Marlins. Also, we want to weigh in on social media as well. Yeah, we also have this statement. Uh, Will and, and David, thank you for your invaluable perspective. We have a statement from Major League Baseball. They just put this out on Twitter. They say we are stunned and devastated by the tragic news that Jose Fernandez has died in a boating accident, um, building upon what you two have been talking about all morning long, about the impact and the influence Jose Fernandez and the personal the tragedy that goes along with this. This is a picture from in Instagram as well that was put up by Jose Fernandez of his girlfriend. And as you can see, the baby bump there, she is pregnant and expecting their first child. So we you have to keep the perspective of the personal tragedy as well as the bigger issue of this gigantic personality, yeah. this uh, sports uh, athlete. We have, we have reaction coming in from all over the community. Uh, Miami-Dade School Superintendent Alberto Cavallo putting up this picture saying our entire Miami-Dade County public school family grieves the tragic death of Marlins pitcher and public education supporter Jose Fernandez. Rest in peace. Also this from Joe Garcia, heartbroken by the passing of Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez. We lost an incredibly talented and uplifting young man. So many uh, reactions coming in. We have um, from Matt Getz. He said, I just saw on the news of Jose Fernandez as a Marlins fan, a Floridian, an admirer of the Cuban-American experience. I am crushed. Again, uh, social media just blowing up. This one from Marcus Stroman, sick to my stomach. Can't believe this. Hashtag RIP Jose Fernandez. Our coverage continues in a moment. We'll be right back. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. A breaking news update. We have confirmed that Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez was among three people killed in a boat crash off of Miami Beach overnight. We have Clay Ferraro, a Local 10 sports reporter, on the phone. Um, Clay, good morning. Um, not the news you want to hear waking up on a Sunday morning, but we've had reaction from Will and David Lang. What a tragedy. Really, that's the only way to describe it. I don't even think there are words to, to adequately describe what everybody's going through right now. We're actually on our way out to Marlins Park right now where it was really supposed to be a day of celebration. Today was the day that they were going to celebrate Ichiro and his 3,000th hit that he got earlier this year, so they were expecting a pretty good crowd. And now, uh, the game, of course, as you guys have reported, has been canceled. And I think what we're, what we're trying to do is once we get out there, just see what fans are thinking. And I, I imagine that the shock is certainly hitting them as they wake up this morning. And, you know, if it's in this social media age, I think we all take for granted that people get the news very quickly. Um, but a lot of people don't necessarily check Twitter before they go out. So it's going to be a very uh, somber, surreal atmosphere when you get out there and you see all these people who are coming out hoping to celebrate. Clay, I, you know, you were talking about this social media, and in this day and age of social media, Jose was quite active on social media. Everybody knew he was an avid boater, avid fisherman. It really, he knew the water quite well. In fact, he attempted to um, defect from Cuba three times, and on the third time, uh, during his defection, his mother fell overboard and during some turbulence, and he actually dove into the water and saved his mother's life on that crossing. It's shocking to find out how he died. Wouldn't you agree? Incredible. It's incredible. And in his life, everything about his life was like something out of a, out of a movie. And you mentioned the, the attempts to defect and then the, uh, getting jailed for just trying to pursue his dream. And I can, I, I can kind of tell you, following him when he first came up, uh, I was not in South Florida at the time. Uh, so we were kind of able to get a, a, a wider view of what he meant in the landscape of baseball on a national, pers national perspective. And, you know, you, you see these brief snippets of these athletes who have this gregarious, outgoing personality and, and walking around with smiles. And I think the more you're in this, you become a little cynical and you say, okay, well, that's what we see on television, but what is he really like? What is he like in the clubhouse on a daily basis? And then you get here and, and you see the clubhouse and you see the way he acts. And 
Jose Fernandez was one of those guys, even on days when he was not going to play, you would just feel his enthusiasm in the clubhouse. You got a sense that coming out on the other side of everything that he went through, he was not cynical. He was not jaded. He was more thankful and appreciative of what he had been able to obtain in making it to the United States, being able to achieve his dream. And, you know, then, then these last couple of years, it could have been devastating suffering the elbow injury that he did. And, and this Tommy John surgery that he went through is not necessarily a sure thing. And, uh, but sure enough, Jose Fernandez, with his attitude and, and uh, the way that he attacks everything so positively, was able to fight through it and come back just as good as he was before. And I think that just added another chapter where you, you look at this and you said, man, this guy, this guy is almost superhuman. And, and I think because of all that, because of his story, because of the uh, comeback from the injury, I, I think that makes it even more shocking. In addition to the fact that he was an avid voter, I think there was almost a sense that he was somewhat superhuman. And, and not that you, you believe that. And not Clay, that you believe that any human being is above anything like that, but it just would not seem real that he would be someone who would succumb to this. And Clay, we are watching video right now of him and his abuela, Olga, uh, the, uh, the woman that he dearly loved, uh, Jeffrey Luria bringing her over and their meeting for the first time here on U.S. soil, very emotional, uh, covered in the, club, in the clubhouse. Clay, we thank you for your perspective. We know you're on your way to the yeah. Marlins Park. We are going to take a break and we'll have much more coverage on the death of Marlins pitcher, Jose Fernandez. Welcome back. If you are just tuning in, big breaking news. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez dead uh, after a tragic boating accident overnight. Here is a uh, tweet from Carlos Jimenez, the mayor of Miami-Dade County. Very sad to hear about the loss of Jose Fernandez and two others. Miami-Dade County's thoughts and prayers are with the victims, families, and the Marlins. And we have more reaction from Florida State Senator Rene Garcia. He's saying how sad to wake up to the news that Jose Fernandez, pitcher of the Florida Marlins, died in a boat accident last night. Many people waking up to see this here on Local 10 and on social media and reacting with such sadness. Again, um, this morning, a boat accident overnight. Um, they're confirming that three people were killed in the boat accident and that Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez, we're looking at video here of him being reunited with his Cuban grandmother on U.S. soil for the first time, very emotional time for him. The Cuban-born uh, pitcher, uh, De defected, came here to the United States to live his dream, lived his dream, and eventually reunited with his family. Always proud, always happy to be here, and very grateful for the opportunity. First round draft um, choice in 2011 by the Marlins, in 2013, rookie of the year. This accident happening uh, just off of Miami Beach, very close to government cut. In fact, the boat was found up turned, uh, overturned rather, I should say, on the north end of that jetty. This is video from that scene overnight. You can see uh, there was a uh, Coast Guard helicopter on scene as well as a Coast Guard boats trying to assist in recovery of the bodies. Three bodies were found. We understand the reports say that two bodies were found in the water, uh, one body underneath the boat. There you see that center console open fisherman boat overturned on the north end of the jetty right there on government cut. We are waiting a news conference from the U.S. Coast Guard any moment now to give us more details about the crash. Throughout the morning, we have seen activity at the Coast Guard station. There you can see the um, members of the Miami, -Dade Fire, Miami Fire Rescue Squad bringing in the bodies recovered from that crash site. One of them, the body of Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez, just 24 years old, killed in that overnight boat crash. We are still waiting the identities of the two other uh, victims in this crash. He, if you look on his social media, you'll see he often went boating with a group of, a tight-knit group of friends. Yes, he was an um, avid fisherman. He was an avid fisherman. And, um, you know, again, very, very sad circumstances. The Marlins, by the way, have canceled the game that was scheduled today with the Atlanta Braves. This, uh, this uh, news of this death, though, transcends baseball. Uh, in fact, the Dolphins' home opener, they are going to have a moment of silence for Jose Fernandez at today's home opener game at Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, again, um, watching, watching video of him, he was a face of the sport. He was very passionate, very passionate young man. 
Um, the Miami Heat releasing this statement just a short time ago on Twitter. We send our deepest condolences to Jose Fernandez's family and to the Miami Marlins. Rest in peace. We're going to be have we're going to have much more on this breaking story. We have multiple crews now one at the Coast in Guard play. station, one, one headed to Marlins Park, and we have also called in Clay Ferraro. He's on his way to Marlins Park. Uh, we have another reporter at uh, Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, we've got um, a lot to cover on this story, so please stay with us. Breaking news, we have confirmed that uh, Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez is among the three people that were killed in a boat crash just off of Miami Beach overnight. Yes, we, um, we've been covering this story all morning long. Um, it happened uh, over, overnight in government cut right between Miami Beach and Fisher Island. Um, this has affected the sports world and the entire community. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston is out at Hard Rock Stadium. He was there for the Dolphins game, but of course everyone there, Laren, talking about this tragedy. That's exactly right, Nikki and Todd. We've been interviewing some folks ever since we got word of this unfortunate news this morning. Lots of Miami Dolphins jerseys out here, lots of Miami Dolphins fans, but these Dolphins fans also like to see the Marlins swim, and they're very focused on the Marlins community and this pitcher, unfortunately, that we have lost and confirmed that we've lost this morning, including Jason Jenkins. He's with the Miami Dolphins organization, and I know you all plan to kind of recognize this unfortunate tragedy somehow today at this season opener today. How are you doing that? Well, like you said, when we got the news from PLG, it really shook us to our core. And it's such a sad day for South Florida, such a sad day for the athletic community. Uh, but I know today this, for this event, we're going to have a moment of silence, forever remembrance, and really talk about the, you know, the life he led, the life of the Marlins as well, too, and really kind of get together around this tragic incident. And I know we spoke just a few moments ago. Um, the Miami sports community is a tight-knit sports community. So how do you see, I guess, that community going forward, I guess, in the wake of this tragedy? Well, we've always had good relationships and great relationships as well between the Panthers, the Heat, uh, the Marlins, and also University of Miami. We play home to us as well at Hard Rock Stadium. So we'll bond together about this. We'll get, we'll get stronger. But it's really a time for unity, getting together not only for the sports community, but South Florida and the whole as well. There's a tragedy of a young man lost his life it's, it's too soon. And you say too soon. He's 24 years old. I mean, you work with a lot of athletes. I mean, how do you see this impacting, I guess, other athletes, I suppose? Well, I know it, you can probably check our social media page for our, our players now as they, as they got the news, sort of reacting with, you know, with horror and, and just such uh, sadness. It's just a, a testament of how life is, uh, how life is fleeting, have opportunities to live everything you have, but also really just get together and, lo and love your family members, love the community, and really just be a part of what's going on. Anything else you'd like to say, sir? No, I mean, on behalf of the Marlins, our owner, Stephen Ross, our president and CEO, Tom Garfinkel, we we'll give our heartfelt condolences to that. We'll do our part to honor and remember him through our moment of silence here. And just everyone, just keep on keeping on. I appreciate your time this morning, sir. Thank you very much. You. And again, we've been speaking to a lot of fans out here. Lots of folks starting to show up here early this morning for today's season opener. And then, of course, when we got the news, we just started kind of fielding, so to speak, the audience here and a lot of people extending their condolences. I just spoke with a young lady, a, a grandma, she says, and a great grandma and a mom. And she says, I cannot imagine what this family is going through. She said, I would never want that to happen to one of my grandsons. And so she extended her condolences to Jose Fernandez's family, his mother, his his family just the same and of course we'll continue to talk to the Miami Dolphins fans here today at Hard Rock Stadium just to kind of get some more perspective on the sports icon they say that they've lost here here in this community. We're live here at Hard Rock Stadium. Laren Livingston, Local 10 News. Laren, thank you. Again, Jose Fernandez, this story affects so many um, in our community, so much in the baseball world. We're looking at, we go to break, we're looking at video of the day he was reunited with his grandmother uh, who's living in Cuba here on U.S. soil. We are waiting right now for the Coast Guard's official press conference. It's moments away. We, of course, will bring it to you live. We continue to follow breaking news. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez died overnight in a boat crash that killed three people. And we are right now going to go to Ian Margol. He has been all morning at the Coast Guard station on Miami Beach where we are expecting to hear from the Coast Guard officials about this accident. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Nikki. Obviously, this is some tragic news we've had to share with you this morning. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez killed in this boating accident. Any minute now, we're expecting a press conference. It's going to be a joint press conference between the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Uh, the uh, 
the Coast Guard here and also Miami-Dade Fire Rescue as well. Uh, apparently at about 3.30 this morning, Coast Guard was patrolling that area, government cut. They came across this boat on the jetty. And when we got there early this morning, it's very obvious. I mean, this boat was not in good shape, flipped over. And obviously, from what we can tell, from what we could see, this has not been confirmed yet. From what we could see, it looked like this, what, this boat had hit the jetty at a high rate of speed. They did confirm three people were killed. Again, one of those being Jose Fernandez, the Marlins pitcher, the all-star pitcher, the 24-year-old who meant so much to this community. Again, we're just waiting for some more information on this. They have not identified the other two people who were on board that ship, on board that boat, excuse me. Uh, we did get to see the bodies were brought in very carefully, very slowly by the Coast Guard here. This has been a very somber, very unfortunate thing that we've had to bring you. But again, we're waiting for more information from the Coast Guard, Florida Fish and Wildlife, and also Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Miami-Dade were the ones that actually retrieved the bodies, brought them here to the Coast Guard, where they were then taken by the medical examiner. Uh, again, we're gonna bring you this press conference live as soon as it begins. For now, we are live in Miami Beach. Ian Margul, Local 10 News. All right, Ian, thank you. And of course, social media is blowing up with the news of Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez's death. This is a tweet put out by the city of Miami. Marlins like pitcher Jose Fernandez killed in boat like crash. It. Our deepest sympathy to his family and Marlins organization. And former MLB MVP Albert Pujols of putting out this, this statement, saddened by the loss of Jose Fernandez sending thoughts and prayers out to his family. Also the Miami Dolphins weighing in with their tweet saying our thoughts and prayers are with the friends and family of Jose Fernandez and the entire Marlins organization. They will hold a moment of silence at today's home opener. Yeah, and we'll, we have much more coverage. Right now we're gonna take a break. Uh, we'll be right back. Breaking news this morning, uh, Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez dead along with two others in a tragic boating accident off the coast of Miami Beach. They hit a jetty there at uh, the government cut. Yeah, the boat was discovered this morning by the Coast Guard as they were patrolling at 3.30 in the morning. Local 10 Sports anchor and reporter Clay Ferraro is at Marlins Park right now. We join him live. They're expected to address this any moment now. Clay? All right, guys, we're waiting to hear from the Marlins very shortly. They have told us we will not hear a news conference before 11 o'clock, but we are set up and ready to hear from them when everything gets going. And walking in here, just such a, a surreal, somber scene. You see the, uh, the sign out front saying that today's game against the Braves has been canceled. And again, as we mentioned earlier, this was going to be a day of celebration. Ichiro got his 3,000th hit earlier this year, so today was going to be the day they were going to celebrate that. Obviously, a much, much different mood around here now that we're learning about the track tragic death of Jose Fernandez at the age of 24. So again, this is what we know right now. We are expecting to hear from Marlins at some point coming up very shortly, probably sometime shortly after 11 o'clock. When we do hear from them, we will bring that to you live. For now, live out at Marlins Park, I'm Clay Ferrero, Local 10 News. And the, thank you, Clay. The Marlins waiting to make their statement after the U.S. Coast Guard makes their statement, um, you know, out there at uh, the Coast Guard station to establish the well, details of what happened and what they know about the investigation. But they did put out a statement earlier this morning. They did. Um, uh, the, the, originally, they were going to speak at 930. They've been pushing it back ever since. We expected them to have that press conference out at the Coast Guard station at 1030. Ian Margul's there, and he's going to break in when they, we do get that uh, uh, press conference to talk about the investigation and what exactly happened in the overnight hours. Yeah, the last time we checked in with Ian, this is what he had. At 3.30 this morning, the Miami Be the Coast Guard was patrolling Miami Beach and came across Jose Fernandez um, and the two other victims and their boat crashed onto that jetty right in government cut between Fisher Island and Miami Beach. Now you um, have to believe, Nikki, that speed somehow played a factor in this because when you look at that boat, first of all, you can see the front of the hull is heavily damaged and then the boat is completely flipped over on the very uh, furthest uh, eastern portion of the jetty on the northern side. This is as you come into Government Cut just across from Fisher Island where all the cruise ships come in. This is an extremely busy cut. Yeah, and I'm sure they will address that in the press conference and the details of the investigation. Um, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, um, or they were called to assist. They helped uh, remove the bodies from the scene. To, to Jose Fernandez, among three people, killed in that boat crash. Um, they say two of the bodies were found in the water and one 
on the boat. Jose Fernandez is 24 years old, a native of Cuba, tried to defect several times, tried time to come to the United States several times, eventually successful, living his dream of becoming um, a Major League Baseball superstar. Yeah, he was um, drafted in 2011 by the Marlins, and in 2013, he was the Rookie of the Year. He really, as our sports director Will Manso and Clay Ferraro have weighed in with their baseball perspective on this, one of the top pitchers in the league. He was the first pitcher in modern era to win his first 17 career home decisions, so he's a big a home favorite. Uh, when they play at home, they call it Jose Day. Of course, this transcends baseball. Uh, we're talking about the Cuban community and how he yeah. has embraced the Cuban community and they have embraced him. His mother and grandmother were showing there several times, always in the stands, always excited. He never took a moment of the game for granted and always had that trademark smile on his face. Here is video of them bringing his, when his grandmother first came to the United States, he's them being reunited with her for the first time on U.S. soil. And um, there they are throwing, playing pitch, um, playing a little game, throwing the ball out, him with the bat. Um, just really a guy that he represents what so many people here in our community hold near and dear. An avid fisherman, an outdoorsman. He, he went boating quite often with his friends and would go fishing. He was no stranger to the waters. Ironically, on his third attempt to defect, his successful defe defection, his mother fell overboard during some turbulence and Jose actually dove into the water okay. to save right his now, mother's we, life. Right now we have a press conference starting, I believe, on Miami Beach. We're going to go live to that. Stadium at 12.30 today. Uh, a lot of us will be there as well. Just so you guys are new Okay. That is George Pino Marlins. from FWC. Oh. We have Florida Fish and Wildlife also going to be part of this press conference. Right, you guys need yellow Coast balance because I don't have a white one. And um, as you can see, they're getting the crews set up. Um, they're going to address um, this crash overnight and claim the life of Jose Fernandez. Okay, they're they're getting, getting what's called a white balance right now, right and essentially now. that allows the ph photographers to make sure they're getting the right temperature balance on their cameras so that yeah. their video is not blue. The video that you're looking at now, though, is the emotional reunion between Jose Fernandez and his abuela, Olga, a, a person so near and dear to his heart. And uh, Jeffrey Luria brought her over to the United States, and this was a very tearful reunion caught on camera and really gives you some insight into Jose Fernandez's character and the people that were closest to him, who he loved the most, and his mother and his grandmother certainly were uh, his most beloved <laughs> people in okay. his life. Okay. We believe they're ready on Miami Beach. We're going to go out, back out to the U.S. Coast Guard Let's station. Let's huh? <laughs> they're always the troublemakers. I got to admit, they were the first ones calling me at 430 this morning. Where were you guys at? All right. As you can see, as you can I see, like they're that still better. getting Good set up out there. Um, We're good? And um, as they get ready to make sure it's an international story, so media ready? from all over the community, Spanish language, English language, ready to start this press conference. The Florida Fish and Wildlife, in conjunction with uh, USCG Coast Guard, Miami Dade Fire Rescue, and all other first responders that responded, uh, want to send out, first of all, our condolences to the family. Uh, our investigators were there this morning with them. Uh, it's a very tragic event, obviously, not only for the parents, not only for the families, but also for Florida Marlins and our community. Last night at 3.15 a.m., Coast Guard was out on patrol as they were exiting government cut. They notified, noticed a vessel upside down on the north side jetty. Upon that, they notified Florida Fish and Wildlife as long as, as well as Miami Day Fire Rescue in the city of Miami, all units responded to the scene where we did find three males that were confirmed dead on scene. They were transferred to the medical examiner's officer office later this morning. Uh, we are confirming that one of the victims is Jose Fernandez, pitcher for the Florida Marlins. Uh, it is a tragic loss, not only for the family, for friends, but for the Marlin community the state of Florida, Major League Baseball, and anyone who met this gentleman. He was a pillar to our community. He was involved in everything that he could be to give back. Uh, it's a great loss, a tragic loss. Uh, there are several people that are hurting today, uh, and we, we send our condolences to everyone. Coast Guard responded, as well as FWC, 
Miami-Dade Fire Rescue City of Miami. Upon arrival, the boat was a 32-foot CV that was found laying on the North Jetty upside down. At the time of discovery, there was three people found. Two of them were under the vessel. One was in the water. As of right now, due to our investigations, we do not have the information of who was under the vessel and who was in the water. We are still working on that. Uh, we will answer questions later on as we go on. Right now, I'm going to pass it over to Captain Dean from Coast Guard. She'll explain everything from the Coast Guard perspective, and we'll continue. Thank you. Captain Dean. Hi, good morning. I'm Captain Megan Dean. I'm the commander of Coast Guard Sector Miami. I just want to echo Officer Abelos's condolences on behalf of the Coast Guard to the family of those involved, as well as the Marlins team and Marlins community. As Officer Velos explained, a little bit after 3 a.m. this morning, a boat from Station Miami Beach came across a vessel on the north jetty of Government Cut when they were headed out for a routine patrol. They came up to the vessel, noticed the navigation lights were still on, and that there was debris in the water. We immediately issued an urgent marine information broadcast, contacted Miami-Dade Fire and Rescue, Miami Beach Police Department, as well as Florida Fish and Wildlife and Conservation Commission. We also, also launched a helicopter. We continued searching until it was confirmed that there were no other individuals in the water. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Captain Reyes from Miami-Dade Fire and Rescue. Thank you. Good morning, Captain Reyes. Lionel Reyes, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, Marine Services Bureau. At 3.40, 3.50, approximately a.m. this morning, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Fireboat received the call of a capsized vessel in the vicinity of Government Cut. Upon arrival, the fireboat found the vessel to be on top of the jetties on the north side towards the uh, entrance of the Miami Harbor. When the fireboat arrived, they deployed two divers who immediately found two bodies underneath the vessel and then found an adjacent body on the south side of the jetties. The three bodies were recovered and later on brought over to uh, Coast Guard Sector Miami for identification. Our condolences go to the uh, family of the, the accident victims and We also had uh, other agencies working along with our other rescues. We had approximately eight divers on scene upon uh, retrieval of the victims. Any other questions? From your initial investigation, can you guys tell how this happened or any idea of what exactly happened? We can only see that the vessel hit the rocks and capsized. That's the only thing that we were able to see upon arrival. Just, just, just a minute, sorry. We'll, we'll do, finish the brief and then we'll take questions afterwards. Come. Everybody, good? Okay, go ahead. Anybody have any questions now? We can go ahead and take questions. Uh, it does appear that speed was involved uh, due to the impact and the severity of it. Uh, it does appear to be that they were coming at full speed when they encountered the jetty and the accident happened. We have to ask any alcohol? As of right now, uh, there was not much evidence on the vessel. Everything was in the water. Uh, there is no indication of alcohol or any type of illegal drugs involved. Uh, right now, the bodies are at our medical examiner's office and uh, the autopsy will determine that. Have you ruled out the possibility there were other victims? As of right now, the possibility of other victims does not exist. Uh, we did confirm with the family that there were only three people on the vessel and all three have been accounted for. Uh, from the indication of where the vessel was found, it appears they were coming south and they hit the north end of the jetty, and that's where the vessel turned upside down and flipped and was found. Okay. Uh, as of right now, we do not have an exact time. That's still under investigation and will be looked into, but we do have Coast Guard uh, vessels uh, notification and IDing of the vessel at around 3, 3.15, 3.30 in the morning last what, night. What kind of boat was it again? I'm sorry. What it was a 32-foot CV center console. Uh, yes, there was severe damage on the bottom, and unfortunately, since it was turned upside down, we have not really been able to get underneath the vessel to determine the damage, but it's bad. And you guys aren't able to identify the other two victims yet? Uh, right now, those two victims are being, their family is being notified. Uh, 
Right now, we can't release that information. That will be released later on today once we get the kin notified and we get permission from them to release that information. Can you say anything about whether they were friends of Jose's or relatives? Or uh, from what we understand and the family is telling us, uh, we had some, you know, several conversations and in-depth interviews with the family this morning. Uh, they were personal friends. There was only one athlete which is Jose Fernandez that was found on the boat. Uh, uh, the other two are personal friends that were also involved. I can advise you that they all are in the ages of average of 24 to 27. Is that jetty boat? visible in the middle of the night? Uh, the jetty is rocks. Uh, it's not very visible, uh, but we are aware that that vessel has traveled several times through this area. So that person was obviously aware of where they were Unfortunately, sometimes at night you deviate because there are no lights out there and you can't see anything. So we're going to look into that during our investigation and find out more and advise you guys on more as it comes in. That's a good point. Any boaters? Alcohol, as of right now, was not involved or no other illicit drugs were found on the vessel. That's going to be up to the medical examiner office to determine if that was a factor, and we'll find that out further as we go along and during our investigation. That's a good point. Any advice to boaters that are going to be out there at 3, 4 o'clock in the oh, morning? Oh, definitely. Boaters, please. Safety is the key. Obviously, you see, uh, we can tell you neither of the three were wearing their life vests, which is something we definitely recommend. Uh, we all, our agency, Coast Guard, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, and any marine agency that's on the water wears their vest. We have to. Okay, that's going to guarantee that you're going to be found and it's going to save your life. We recommend everyone, please take a course, learn about what you're going to do. Just if you were buying a car, you're going to study before you buy your car, you're going to learn about the car you're buying. We want you to go out there and learn about boating, boating safety, and the dangers that are out there. Obviously, you see the danger that's out there today. Tragic loss for the city of Miami, for the community, for Major League Baseball, and for anyone who met Jose great person and it's a great loss i had the experience of talking to him several times down to earth great person i'm sorry i'm getting goosebumps right now it's really hitting home and it's and it's horrible you, see, you saw that you said that you saw that boat in this area before was that jose's boat was he driving in the past or actually he... it was not jose's boat it does pertain to a friend of jose who is very well connected with several Marlins players. And I have stopped that boat before for safety inspections with other Marlins players on board. So we know that this boat knows the area. We just can't answer why this happened. And then when you try to stop them before, was Jose driving in those? No, Jose's never been driving. Jose's always been a passenger. How badly was the boat damaged? Uh, the boat is a total loss right now from what we can see. Uh, it, it's bad. Is, is, there's no other word for it. It's horrible. It's bad. It, it, it's bad. Any other questions? We got Coast Guard, Miami Day Fire Rescue. Anything pertaining to them regarding the event? You say you did not know where the boat was coming from. I know you we do not know the boat where it was coming from. We know the direction of travel and where it came to rest. Do you know what time they went out? Uh, unfortunately, we do not have that information. That's still under investigation. Our investigators are looking into uh, departure times. They're looking into GPS coordinates on the vessel, and they're trying to find out more. Uh, this will take several days uh, to find out what's going on, not only because of the tragedy uh, of the people involved in the tragedy, it's just the severity of the tragedy. The family had been aware that he was going out with his two friends. That is correct. The, all the families that were accounted for uh, were aware that they were going out that evening. Can we get some Spanish sound, please? Yes, we're going to do Spanish now. Anything else in English? Anything, 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 anything. You are listening to uh, Florida okay. Fish and Wildlife Perfecto. Conservation Officer Lorenzo Velez, as well as Captain Megan Dean, the commander of the U.S. Coast Guard, and Captain Leonel Reyes from Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, uh, wrapping up their press conference on yeah. U.S. Coast Guard Miami Beach. Addressing the specifics of the discovery of the boat that Jose Fernandez and his friends were on last night. They said around 3.30, the Coast Guard was patrolling the area of Miami Beach, government cut Fisher Island, when they came across that boat you see there, a 32-foot CV center console that was flipped 
on that jetty. Uh, they found bodies in the water and bodies under the boat. Miami-Dade um, Fire Rescue, in fact, putting eight divers in the water. They found two bodies underneath the boat, one on the south side of the jetty. The boat hit the north side, and so that person was obviously ejected to the south side of the jetty. Officer Velez from FWC saying, quote, speed definitely is a factor. It appears they hit the jetty at a high speed. Yet he said that this boat and the person that owns it, which is not Jose Fernandez, is familiar with these waters right. and has traveled past this jetty and been stopped for uh, an FWC boat inspection before. We are looking at live pictures right now as that investigation continues there. As you can see that um, flip 32 foot boat there on the console, you can see officers looking inside as well as around the area of that boat. It's a 32 foot uh, CV center console. It's a very common boat for fishermen to use. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the inspectors right now looking for more clues as to why this boat ended up overturned up on the jetty. They said that this boat belongs to a personal friend of Jose Fernandez. He's been in the boat fishing in that boat before uh, with his friends. The two other people that were killed have not been identified. And you even heard one of the, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Captain uh, Leonel Reyes get emotional. Jose Fernandez, a big deal in this community. For more on this tragedy, we go, of course, to Will Manso. He's the first person that called in this tip to us this morning. Um, Will, you heard the press conference. You heard from them. The Marlins about to make a statement. Um, so, so tragic. Yeah, and it's, it's a difficult thing to grasp right now. And for those that are just listening in and waking up and starting their Sunday morning in disbelief at this news, it is real, it is true. And, and as you heard, the Coast Guard and other officials there indicate on what this boating accident and what happened. Jose Fernandez has lost his life at the age of 24. From the Marlins' perspective, they were told overnight and early this morning, officials started to get word on the possibility that Jose was involved in this accident. They started to gather information initially when I spoke to a Someone from the bar Wednesday told me we have no comment at this moment because we really need to gather this information. We're all in shock. We need to see what's going on. But within an hour of that conversation, the Marlins then did confirm that Jose had lost his life. And it, to say that it's heartbreaking and a tragedy would be an understatement. The Marlins immediately released a statement saying that they're, as an organization, just heartbroken for Jose, for his family, for the franchise, for the fans, obviously. And that today's game, Marlins game, the series finale against the Atlanta Braves at home at 1 o'clock, has been canceled. The Marlins, meanwhile, uh, David Sampson, about an hour ago, uh, communicated with him. Marlins team president couldn't speak. He was at a point where he just wasn't ready to speak at all, but did say that once the Coast Guard concluded its news conference, that the Marlins would hold their own news conference uh, over at the ballpark to discuss this tragedy. So right now that's where it stands. I think like anyone, whether you knew Jose, were a Marlins fan, worked for the Marlins, whatever it may be, you're just in shock this morning that this news is coming in that, a vibrant personality, a superstar athlete, such a big part of our South Florida community, such a big part of the Cuban-American community, living the American dream at the age of 24 years old, has lost his life so tragically. And, Will, uh, we are waiting right now. Clay, uh, Clay Ferraro is at Marlins Park, and we, of course, are going to bring that news conference to uh, our viewers live. I, it's so perplexing, Will. That you're watching video right now of investigators looking at that 32-foot CV as it is mm -hmm. upturned and overturned on the rocks. But so perplexing, they say that the boaters that were in this boat were familiar with this territory, and they went on to say that at this point, no alcohol or illicit drugs were found on the boat and are not considered part of the investigation. So you have to wonder, how did this happen? And, and the thing, too, is, Todd, and for those that weren't listening earlier and that maybe aren't familiar too much with Jose, Jose is an avid fisherman and an avid boater, and if you follow Jose on social media, he has a group of friends that he goes out with very often. Now, obviously, we can't confirm or know at this point if, it, if this is the same group of friends, but he has a group of friends that he also goes out to boating, out fishing, out going for rides, uh, those with good friends of his that he brings along. This is nothing new for Jose. Jose is an avid boater, and even though you heard officials that indicate this is in his boat, Jose is very familiar with the rules of boating, and, and he's very polished and understanding on it. This isn't a novice who went out of the boat for the first time and this happened. So as to who was driving the boat and what led to this, obviously that's all stuff that's being investigated. But Jose Fernandez was a very, very big boater and avid fisherman and a guy who loved getting out there in the water. So... The fact that this tragedy happened it brings more questions to what could have happened because the people on this boat seemingly 
had a pretty good grasp of the rules of voting, the laws, and obviously of being careful, especially as you're getting to shore near that area. Okay, well, Will, Will, we will, uh, you will continue to stay on top of this all day and you'll be part of the coverage. For now, we're going to go back to the U.S. Coast Guard station where we have uh, reporter Ian Margol, where that press conference just wrapped up. Ian? Yeah, Nikki, uh, we just finished that press conference. They're doing another one right now for Spanish language. Uh, this is obviously a very tragic news that we had to bring you. Jose Fernandez, the Marlins pitcher, killed in this overnight boat accident. Uh, what we just told us was the Coast Guard was patrolling Governor's Cut, patrolling that area. They came across the boat overturned at the jetty there, right there at the... Uh, right there uh, at the at the pier right there they said they came across it when they got there uh, divers got in the water found two of the bodies underneath the boat one of the bodies was in the water they did not confirm who was who they only confirmed that jose fernandez the marlins pitcher was one of those victims they did identify the other two as males said they were both friends of jose fernandez and also said the owner of the boat the person that was probably driving this boat at the time of the accident is very familiar with these waterways as will was saying They've actually spoken to him several times. They've stopped him for safety checks uh, just before and had other Marlins on board that boat at the time. So again, they believe this happened sometime in the middle of the night. They're not sure exactly when this boat went off. Uh, again, it, as soon as they got on scene, it, obviously a tragic, a tragic accident of some sort. We got there. We could see the jetties, obviously, because it was bright out. But you can imagine there's no lights over there. There's no markers over there. You can only imagine that it's very, very dark late at night and you don't see those jetties. And they do believe that speed was a factor in this. The boat, they say, is a complete loss, very, very damaged. They do not believe at this point in the investigation that alcohol or illicit drugs were involved. Again, this is still an ongoing investigation, though. Uh, Miami-Dade Fire came in to help Coast Guard. They retrieved the bodies, brought them here to the Coast Guard station. They were then brought to the medical examiner. And, of course, the medical examiner will make the final determination on the cause of death. But once again, what we know, Jose Fernandez, the all-star, 24-year-old Miami Marlins pitcher, killed in this tragic boat accident. We just heard from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. We heard from the Coast Guard, and we heard... Uh, from the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, all working together on this. City of Miami Fire even was there at one point helping with sonar. We can confirm that there were three people killed. One of them was Jose Fernandez, the Marlins pitcher. Uh, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue was called in to help with this. They had transported those bodies to here. We're going to keep covering this for you for the rest of the day, obviously. At 1230, they're going to be holding another conference over at the Marlins Stadium. The Marlins are going to be speaking then as well. And, of course, we're going to bring you that as much coverage as we can with all the information we can get as soon as it becomes available to us. Again, just one more time, this tragic news we're having to bring you this morning. Miami, Miami Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez killed in a tragic boating accident. And guys, we obviously our thoughts and prayers with their family and the friends of these victims. All right, Ian Margo, thank you for that live report and continuing on what Ian was saying from that live press conference. No, none of the bodies had life vests on them. Right. They didn't have life vests on, but they did say that the navigation lights were on when that Coast Guard boat who was patrolling the waters found that overturned boat at 3.30 in the morning. And that it was somebody they were familiar with that they believe was very familiar with the waterways. So, of course, that investigation continues and they, of course, will, you know, have the identities of the other victims in this crash as we continue coverage throughout the Clay day. Clay Ferraro is at Marlins Park and we're waiting to hear from the organization about the tragedy that has struck them. We are also, we have, have heard from Laren Livingston, who is at the Dolphins the game. Hard Rock Stadium, and you know, uh, lots of sports fans are going to be going to the home opener. But I have to think that the, with a heavy heart, yeah, many of they're them they're going to hold a moment of silence this. at the beginning of the home opener for Jose Fernandez. Um, he's called a pillar of this community. We even saw um, spokespeople uh, being, uh, you know, overcome with with uh, emotion. Because even if you aren't a baseball fan, you know who Jose Fernandez is in this community because you know his story. And he really was accessible, too. As big a star as he was, uh, you know, the, the officer from FWC uh, it w was talking about, he talked to him several times. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have uh, team coverage on um, on this breaking news. Uh, Sanella Sabovic is live at the scene where that investigation continues. Sanella. Good morning, Nikki and Todd. We've just been informed that FWC is now handling this investigation. You can see that overturned boat that Miami pitcher Jose, Miami Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez was on. It remains there on the scene just off the coast of Miami Beach, east of South Point Park. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue is there. 
Police are on the scene. They tell me that the three bodies were recovered right when the accident happened. A little shortly thereafter, about two divers with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue came, immediately found the three bodies, pulled them out of the water. Again, that boat is set to be towed at some point today. We're hearing it's a lengthy process. It's been out there roughly about seven hours right there on the north side of the jetty, just east of South Point Park. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue is able to confirm to me that Florida Fish and Wildlife is a lead investigating agency on this. And here along the beach, Nikki and Todd, we've been here for the past hour and a half as word started spreading throughout South Florida that Jose Fernandez passed away. A lot of people have been coming here on the beach, taking pictures, expressing their condolences to Fernandez's family and the Miami Marlins organization. They again expressed their condolences, saying that they're very devastated by this loss. But again, the latest here is the, the boat involved in that accident. You can see it off in the distance there. It is expected to be towed at some point today. Once we get word on that, we will certainly bring it to you. Again, FWC leading this investigation. Bodies were found right away after the accident happened sometime around four this morning. Once we get any more late breaking details, we will certainly bring it to you throughout this newscast. For now, reporting live in Miami Beach, Sonella Sabovic, Local 10 News.